What is up guys, it's your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636. As you can probably tell by the camera right now, it is raining here in Chicago. Now me and a lot of other residents are really happy about this. Because not only has that rain been helping the fires that have been set over the past 48 hours cool down, it's also began to cool a lot of the foot traffic around the neighborhoods here. Which of course has settled down a lot of the looting. My best to keep wiping the lens for you guys. So we got a nice clear view. This has been a long three days for not only guys like me, but even more so the heroes of CPD, uh, Chicago Fire Department, pretty much all the emergency services here in Chicago. Because I really did see them perform their job in a way that I never really knew that they could do. Today, I'm going to take you guys around a couple different neighborhoods, some of the damage done by some of the protesting, and I also want to take you to a couple of the neighborhoods on how they prevented some of these same things from happening within their neighborhood. A lot of the businesses here on Madison Street, advanced auto parts here on Madison and Laverne took a pretty hard hit. Oh, you watch YouTube videos? When did uh, when did the majority of this happen? Yesterday, right? Last night. So you guys came here at nine, started securing it, and then left, and then at three. It About one thirty, they started shooting. Be safe. <laughs> I love getting spotted by local business owners like that. Really sad situation there. Oh, here we are at Madison and Cicero. I was here at around noon yesterday when I saw some of the first protesters ripping into this security door. Started to bring some of the stuff out of here. So I was out here as hundreds of people descended on this. What's up, brother? Good, bro. I haven't seen you in a minute. I've seen it, but I don't, you know, I, I didn't do it. They ain't did nothing to me, you know. We need, we need this shit here. You know what I'm saying? Now they ain't fucked it up. Now we ain't got none. We need this shit in our neighborhood. Now we ain't got nothing. Where we gonna go? What we gonna do? How we, how people gonna pay their, their cell phone bills? This is, I've never seen anything like this in my life. All right, man. Well, be safe. Keep your head up. We're going to get through this together. Yeah, be safe, man. I will. We'll rebuild after this. You know we will. That's what Chicagoans do. I think it's really important that we listen to some of the people that have been around in the neighborhoods for literally years like that. I I've seen him at that gas station for years, years, years. This was a common sight yesterday as well. This was a lot of business owners' last-ditch attempt for please do not loot my store. Black owned in all caps. I saw that spray painted on certain businesses and stuff like that and, and hoping that uh, a lot of the rioters would pass over the business in some cases it worked i also saw some cases that it did not As a lot of you guys saw i covered the downtown riots on saturday and i came back here to the west side saturday night and it was surprisingly peaceful however sunday morning the whole west side went up for grabs cops that are normally stationed on the west side left for downtown which pretty much left the west side up for grabs when did this all happen around what time yesterday 9 12. The building was on fire at 9 12. They put oh. it out at 9 25. So Chicago Fire Department was here within about 10 minutes? Yeah. And this was this was kind of one of the main hubs for food and groceries around here too. That's all we had. That's all we got right here. Now what? Be safe, alright? We'll get through this. Now we're coming up to Chicago and Cicero here. And I was here at this liquor store at around 4, maybe 4.30 when the initial breaking in started. Most of this is just iPhone footage. Security bars worked very well. However, uh, they broke into the glass and they took pretty much everything within the store. A lot of the food's still in there. However, literally every food and grocery store on the west side, it seems like, got hit. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a YZ450F Yamaha. Yeah, the 2018 that came with the electric start. Is it a big sprocket to do those wheelies or no? No, it's a small, it's a smaller sprocket. If you put too big of a sprocket on the dirt bikes, you can't go, you can't go fast. You ride? I used to. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. Why do you guys have this closed down here? They don't want us to go people coming in this way. All right, brother. Be safe. Here on Madison and Keeler, another one of these beauty shops getting cleared out. More of these stores, all of Madison has pretty much been looted right now. <laughs> the west side is literally up for grabs. Here we are, another food and grocery store. Rain's really starting to come down now. 
Now, I was here at Arthington and Pulaski yesterday around 4 when some of the looting took place here. Are you guys are business owners? We don't know what's going to happen. You guys think you'll be able to recover from this? No idea. And this is one of the biggest uh, food and grocery stores here in the North Lawndale neighborhood. Like 70 maybe. Jeff, Brian, good to meet you, man. Be safe out here, all right? Now, this was the first corner I came to, and it was around 11 o'clock in the morning uh, when I saw this Metro PCS and this beauty center here on Roosevelt and Pulaski being thoroughly looted. Here's another sandwich shop and grocery store that got thoroughly looted. This Metro and that beauty center yesterday were some of the first places around here to get hit. Yep. What's that? Oh, there were shot, shots over here? Yes, yeah, some lady got, got shot right in the face over here. Yesterday? Yeah. Well, that looked like the blood right there, for real. That's the blood? Some motherfucker was smart enough, bro. This motherfucker went in there and did something to the computer or something, and all the gas was free. Did it, y'all? Free gas. Free gas for everybody. I'm like, man, are y'all fucking serious, bro? Is this shit really going on, bro? I'm 50 years old, and you motherfuckers had to wait for a black man to get killed for y'all to riot. Over some bullshit. Fuck up just to make something out of something. Yeah, that yeah. was an excuse. To me, that was an excuse for y'all to just show y'all ignorant because y'all ignorant for what the fuck y'all just did. Bro. You come over here with a drive by shooting and you kill an innocent girl? Yeah, that she didn't bother nobody. She didn't bother me. Pretty much the whole business district here at Pulaski and Roosevelt got hit hard, hard. I'm soaking wet. You know what? I'm happy because the fires and the looting has really calmed down today. For me to only see one or two things still happening, um, I'll take it. But like you're seeing more outrage from the community over what's going on from some of the younger crowd within the neighborhood. The whole thing is sad. Yes, make no doubt about it. Shootings and crime were rampant out here last night. Rampant. We had the most deadly weekend in Chicago in I don't even know how long, years. So in between people being cooped up for so long because of this COVID thing, people being outraged over the video of George Floyd being killed, now you just added a bunch of free liquor and mob mentality to an already violent neighborhood. So it was no surprise that this went on. However, I was not expecting it at this scale. Yesterday evening, I couldn't even really cover anymore. Part one, because I was so tired. And part two, because the protesting had got to the business districts around my house and it looted most of the businesses around my neighborhood. So by the time the sun had fallen, I was at home on the couch, weary eyed with the house locked down. Now I know up until now, this vlog has not been very positive. However, there is news on the horizon. There was a select few of neighborhoods, one really standing out, that defended their neighborhoods and what those small businesses mean to the community. Who did the defending might surprise you. My hood right here. Cut these motherfuckers right here. Kilo. Hey, keep that shit out of here, nigga. We ain't doing none of that shit right here. So here we are on 26th Street. 26th Street has had a very storied history here in Chicago and is home to the largest Mexican neighborhood in the city, Little Village. Somebody just did a hit and run. They're trying to tell the cops where they went. Now, like I said, 26th Street is home to the largest Hispanic community here in Chicago. It is also home to the largest Hispanic gangs in Chicago. Gangs like 2-6 and the Latin Kings have been fighting here for decades. And as I look around in their business district, I don't see any smashed windows. It's because the gang members came out here yesterday as looting and rioting ran rampant through the west side. This neighborhood was an exception because it had gang members guarding the businesses. And we still see some of those guys out here today. This was a true demonstration of not only showing why the gangs were started in the first place, which is support and protect local businesses and the community members that they support. However, it showed just how much can be done when they work together. Because as of yet, I have not seen a broken window here on 26th Street. And make no doubt, 26th Street is a stronghold here in Chicago as far as business goes. So much so that the only street that tops the amount of revenue that is generated besides 26th Street is Michigan Avenue downtown. Yes, 26th Street is the second highest grossing street in the city. That's how many businesses, the majority being small, are located right here. These businesses were protected by the community, which was amazing. Now, did some businesses still get hit? Absolutely. However, not nearly to the extent neighborhoods like Austin, West Garfield Park, North Lawndale, 
Humble Park got hit. Those communities got hit and they got hit hard. And like I said, we are Chicagoans. We rebuild. This is what we do. This is who we are. So I do have faith in our city and I don't think this is the final nail in the coffin like some people are saying. However, I think the impact of this riot will be felt in this city for years. Because in some cases, for some of these businesses, the city really did put the final nail in the casket. They were already in an economically depressed neighborhood and they had already been put under the sanctions of COVID-19 for the past three months. And now you just cleared out all their merchandise. So some of these cases, these businesses will not come back. In the rain, you can only clutch up under the bridges. It's the only place with some traction. All right, guys, I got to show you around some of the businesses that I got to witness over the past 48 hours uh, transform. We got to speak to business owners and community members alike, and we even got to speak to some of the looters. As always, guys, this is your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636, telling you guys to keep your heads up. If you're new here, please do hit the subscribe button. Make sure to leave this video a like and comment down below on what you thought of some of those interactions and some of the businesses within our city. I love you guys. Please be safe, and please, for the love of God, respect life, Chicago. I'm out. Peace.